Hello. Hello. Of course, Rome, Rome sure is looking piggy. Yeah, well, you know, the, those pesky Gauls. Yes. So, who I think uh, had a pig symbol in the Rome Total War. I got a bit bored of playing as Romans and winning almost every fight. Are you sure? Are you sure you didn't just feel self-conscious because I wasn't massively into it after a while? Or, or you no, felt it, I wasn't massively into it? it, it or? It, it was getting a little tedious and I needed a break from it. And I know we we physically had like a two, two and a half week break from doing any of this stuff. Yeah. Right. But in terms of I, I need to do something different today. It was getting a little samey. But uh, yeah, like what's what, what are we going to do? Right. What's this we're playing? This this is called Northgard. Right. And what is, what's happening here is I am playing as a bunch of Vikings in a new land. And basically we need to conquer the world. We have six. Enemies. Gosh, that sounds familiar. Well, yeah, but this is a this is a, a single battle basically, rather than a long-winded campaign. Right. So we are on an island with a whole bunch of other Viking folk. Oh, yeah. Five groups, by the looks of it. Uh, and we may not finish this today, but it won't be a. It's not a massive, massive story that will end up coming out of this. Right. So, and it is a matter of we survive. They're going to be fighting each other, just as we're fighting them. Sounds a lot like uh, Heroes of Might and Magic. Sort it of could setup. well be considered not, very not similar. In, entirely identical, but uh, yeah. So what's happened here is I've colonised a uh, an area next to the one that I started in, so that I can get some farmers to or villagers. To uh, do some stuff over there, and I'm going to tell them to get a food sign up as well. Because what that's going to do? Oh, oh, that was very dangerous. I would have made a very big mistake if I'd done that. <laughs> it's a good job it tells us. What was the mistake? I almost didn't make it so that I had enough wood to uh, to to make a woodcutter's hut. All right. And without a woodcutter's hut, you can't make wood. <laughs> Right. So we... it, it saved me a big a big problem there. You better get in Thank on you. that pretty quick. Thank you, game. Uh, I am I am getting through my wood. Uh, I, I I always think about the food first because food such an important resource in this game. Yeah, as in life. But, Top yeah, tip, kids. Generally. Yeah, just keep on eating. Don't yeah. worry about how fat you get. Yes. We didn't. <laughs> I could do with. Uh, no, that's not helpful. I'm going to have to put a woodcutter hut in somewhere a little bit less optimal than optimal. But it could be worse, I suppose. Hmm. Uh, and then we, we just explore and expand and, you know, there's all sorts of shit that we need to worry about. This is probably a forest. That looks like a sort of forest area, doesn't it? It does a bit. It's terribly dark. Well, that I suppose bit. that will get a bit lighter as you get nearer. As I explore it, yeah, what, what's going on right here is just, I've got a scout here that's tied to my hive tree. And I, mm. Hilda is her name. Uh, and they're exploring this bit now, which is going to have a bear in it, I reckon. Like, I have a feeling there's going to be a bear in that, in them bear woods. What do you do with a bear? Uh, kill it, preferably. Right. Can I colonise? I might have a group that... Oh no, I can colonise it if I've got enough. Oh, I can. I'm going to colonise this area that's got a wall. So I can get my scouts to check out this place that's got the boat and shipwreck. So I'll get all sorts of bonuses for exploring the shipwreck. Uh, it's basically just a matter of... These wolves are now my allies. I can't control them, but they won't attack. Which is just as valuable, as far as I'm concerned. Let's just count them. Mm. There's no bear in there. But there are more wolves. Uh-oh. So, um... From there. Yeah, I've uh, I've got some more topics if you want to. Yes, let's do it. Okay, so this is a, a sort of uh, a um, just a general discussion one, not really relevant to anything in the news at the minute. Where do you stand on children in restaurants? I don't. I sit down. Where you sit on children? Okay. Do you think they should be allowed? Of course they should. Okay. They are entitled to be seated as much as the next person. I um, find it very uh, annoying. Well, you would. <laughs> uh, 
yes, not being a father or having any sort of attachment to a child, um, I I think they're annoying and loud. And and while I'm fine with kids on public transport, I think you should be considerate of other people when you're in a public space. And um, if you can control your kids, that's fine. But if you can't, why the fuck are you inflicting that on me when I'm out? Well, for a I, meal? I get that, but you can't put a blanket on a blanket ban on kids, can you? It's not the kids, it's the parenting of the issue there. Yeah, I mean, the kids just being kids. Yeah, yeah, you're right, it is an issue with parenting. So it's not your fault, kids. It's your parents. They're terrible, parents terrible kids. people. What I've done here, I just want to explain, is uh, I've made a food silo over here. What's uh, that for? A, well, wait, we'll put food in it. And <laughs> it gives a 10% boost to all food production in the area. Lovely. That line demarked by the, the dotted, perforated line, if you will. Right. Um, and it will also protect so much food. I think it's like 500 food or something from rats, uh, which can be a problem at some point. Uh, so basically, it's a good idea to have them. Not only that, but if you have idle workers like these ones in an area where you've got food silos, they will gather food and put it in there. So rather than just have a farm, I've actually got a farm and two random forager people doing stuff. Which is beneficial to me in many, many ways. Right. Yeah, what are you farming? Uh, it's wheat, by the looks of it. Mm. More wheat, my lord. Put a little defence tower up because I don't trust that area. Oh, and we have achieved something. We've, we've managed to get some learned ability stuff. So I'm going to see what I can do that is going to make things a little bit better. Um, and go with the simple living because everything's cheap as a bit. And then I'll make things a little bit easier to... Oh, no, everyone's under attack. Kill the wolf! Lovely stuff. So that means that now my people are damaged. So what I need, really, is a healer's hut. If I can find one. There's my healer's. Mender's hut, there we go. So, back to kids in restaurants. Sorry. Yeah, I don't... I, I think... Well, I basically said what I have to say on the matter. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, it's, one of, it's an awkward one, isn't it? Because you, you kind of want your... You, you want them people to be able to have an opportunity to go out and do shit, but you also uh, want them to not ruin your own time. So Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a tough line to cross. So, uh, you, you said you had a topic that you'd been sitting on a while last week, last a couple of days ago. Yeah, I... Um, no, it comes to it. Sorry. Uh, I would like to talk about vampires. I don't think we've talked about it before. I know I've mentioned it to someone, but I don't think it was you. It or they. Oh. Is it vampires? Is that a game specifically, or is it no, just no, the concept? No, no, vampires, the, the, the concept of vampires. Okay, the fo folkloric creature, yes. Yeah, because of the, of the whole thing about them needing to be invited in. Yeah. I I have for some time questioned to myself who has the authority to invite someone into a a vampire into a property? Could mm. I invite a vampire into your home? Yes. But why? What what gives me the right to If you were in my them? home all they need is like someone to say yes by all means come in. No, but is it really that simple? Yes. Why is it that simple? Because, because it is. You could you could break into someone's home and then invite a vampire in, and the people who live there have yes. not given permission. No. And I feel like that's not something that people consider very often. No, you could. You could absolutely do that. That's perfectly, that's perfectly re legitimate and reasonable. And sounds I, like I, a funny scene in a in a comedy. I feel like there should be some sort of rule. I feel like you're misunderstanding this. I feel like you're misunderstanding me. I well, my approach to this, I mean, we've spoken about this before. I don't you doubt you'll remember, but my view on the rules when it comes to things like vampires and werewolves is that you make them up yourself, or you, I sort of pick and choose from various things. Okay. Like I've never the only place I've seen, um, in in uh, an American werewolf in London, for instance. The victims of the said American werewolf haunt him as ghosts. 
Okay. And I've always liked that idea because it it sort of takes the curse of the werewolf and makes it a fucking curse, more of a curse than just a horrible transformation. Like you turn into this monster and the things you do literally haunt you. So I sort of took that and I think basically that's the same for everybody. You pick and choose. Rick um, Mayall was in that film. Yes, he was. He was in the uh, pub. Do you remember what it was called? I cannot for the life of me remember what it was the called, but I've not actually seen the film. It was called so... The Slaughtered Lamb. Oh, that makes sense. Which is a very inviting name for a pub. Um, it is somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. So, to answer your question, it depends on whom you ask. See, I, I feel like there should be more rules behind the whole... Um, not, uh, oh, it's now. Uh, more rules behind it. Because I, I envision a scenario where people who are call centre folk mm. and ask about home ownership and stuff like that are in fact building up a database for vampires. Okay, but you'd, I think well, the way I look at it is that you would have to be invited into the home by somebody within the home. I I, I feel like or within the area. I, I feel I feel like property ownership is a much more viable source of the permission personally well I mean it's a pointless I mean I don't want to fall out over this I, no, just, it's, it's, I it's, suspect it's, it's, we might but um, it's, a, it's a ridiculous no it's a, thing, it's a pointless it, topic but, I mean I, I guess we I, we just have to agree to disagree my stance no, on it is agree uh, with me no fuck you fuck you where do you get Fucking off fucker. I don't uh, yeah, it's not I'm right practicing here. abstinence right I'm not very good at it I Imagine. That's why I'm practicing. Um. Yeah. So I. I oh, okay. Figure. Uh, I suppose it apply. Well, there's an episode of Inside Number Nine with a vampire, oh, and yeah. uh, the premise is that it's sort of a a mix of the police procedural, the buddy cop type movie, and a vampire film, and the vampire has to ask permission to be allowed in the police car. Okay. So I wonder what the what the um what the rules are in that regard. Not that there are any hard and fast rules, but what what where does a vampire not need to be invited into? You know, their own property. Yeah, but if they if they're on if they're going into a a, a bar or something, you know. Well, that is true. Or if they if they accidentally walk on, you know, if they're walking down the street, what ha what uh, happens if they, they... they pass into private property by mistake? Yeah, are they, can they physically do that? I mean, apparently well, not. It's it's a it's a complicated situation, isn't it? But then I know of, I mean, some takes on it disregard that entirely. I mean, when was the last time you saw the thing about vampires not being able to cross running water? No, I don't. I don't see that much vampire stuff, to be honest with you. Uh -huh. Well, I, I, I don't, don't think it it comes up all that often, to be honest. No, absolutely uh, not. It's, it's pe people forget the law, but well, it's old law, isn't it? It's all. I mean, witches. I think that's the thing with witches as well. Witches can't cross it. Running water and um, I think the silver bullet thing. I think that's something that works with vampires as well because I think I don't know. This might be something I heard on Being Human. I I don't know, but I think uh, Judas was some stories claim that Judas was the first vampire, and of course because he was paid in thirty pieces of silver. Ah, uh, yeah. Him um, and his bloody silver. Yeah. How do, I, how do I get this? Is it, is it this one? Is that, that room there? Yes, it is. So I need that first. How do I get that one? I need stone. Oh, I always forget about the bloody re need for resources in this bloody game. <sighs> I need a miner. All right, Jesus. I, I, do you want that on video? Not that kind of miner. Uh... Miner, not mine all. Honestly, Ben, get your head out of the gutter. Get your head out your ass. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you will be. I should have made like a 1970s BBC producer and turned a blind eye. Damn right. Wait. 
So I'm building a few towers. Oh, this is interesting. A attack. wolf has decided to attack from this territory into this territory. But this territory is guarded by my own wolves that I have some authority over. You've trained them. I've claimed them as my own. And I can't do anything with them. And I can't heal them, it seems, either, which is a bit of a shame. But I basically have... I've got some wolves in here that are going to help defend me. I've got some wolves in here that are going to help defend me. I've got some wolves down here that are going to maybe help defend me if anything comes from here. So I've basically built a small army of wolves <laughs> around my border. I'm sure they won't stand up much against a, an AI army, surely. You'd be surprised. Oh, right. they can, if, if there's enough of them, they can do some serious damage. They can damage. hold their own well enough, can't, can't they? Can well, I mean, it, the fact I've built some towers here as well will help out a little bit. Because yeah. they'll, they'll fire across the map. And they're an extra obstacle to uh, get in the way. Oh. So, uh, let's do that one. Yeah. I don't really know what's going, what I'm doing at the moment. I'm just sort of... Have I got anything in there? I've got fishermen in there. My scout's dead. That doesn't scout. bode well. No, they've, they've been exploring. This is a difficult place. It's a big here. sword. You, you can clear that with a scout. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, you, that is a uh, helpful win condition. It gives you more lore, and more lore means that you're more likely to win. If you end up with all four of these blessings from the gods, so it's like a field modifier or something, or well, or this, do you do you have to visit it, or if you fight in the vicinity of it, both sides you need to get claim it. ownership of it, and oh, then right. you'll have people who can study it, and they will earn more. Right. More lore stuff. Right. It's an artifact, basically, that you use to uh, make yourself strong. Have I got enough stone yet? I haven't got any fucking stone yet. Why have you not got me any fucking stone? Because that's mm. not stone. Fuck's sake. Where's the stone? I need stone, not iron. Is there stone in there? No, is there stone in there? Yes, there's stone in here. Good. So, um, are you aware of the latest Twitter thing? What's the latest Twitter thing? Aside from the thread stuff we talked about last time. Is this the uh, the thing about not being able to post so many? Well, yeah, there's YouTube a stuff. there's a limit on stuff you can see. So once you reach like six hundred posts, if you're not verified. It stops you for like a day or six hours or something. And initially this seemed I mean, like some stupid fucking idea that Elon Musk had for some reason. But I've heard suggestions that it's actually to cover up how shitty and slow the website is now running. Because everything's falling apart. And it will cut down on the number of users across the day. I mean, God only knows. And I was quite... Be... I was uh, I was quite keen to see this, but I, I guess I don't see that many Twitter posts, to be honest, because it's not yet come up. I know I don't see that many because I barely look at anything. To be mm. honest here. Uh, that one. What? How I not got any of this? Oh, I need six. What am I? Oh, I have other knock stone. Oh, and I've got this one. I've got a free knowledge out of it. Hmm. What is a uh, thane? I don't know. It's something that pops up in other things I've heard of as well. I'm going to make it so I don't have to be as happy. It seems like a sensible thing to do. That's us, isn't it? A thane oh, is yeah. a free retainer of an Anglo Saxon lord. Yeah, that's what you said. Or a Scottish feudal lord. Yeah, that's what, what you said. Uh, let's might take that place as well. Might as well. It's got more wolves in it. I'm basically just building a wolf border. <laughs> hmm. But it's a valuable wolf border. There's one less, it's one more area they've got to fight through to get to me. And this area's got, I, I don't know if you can just see it, but you see now we've got this yellow, this red, red marking here, and then it's a more light, almost white, creamy sort of marking here. Yeah. That means that that is a neutral NPC area. Mm. I can't get into it yet. It's, I'm going to assume it's probably going to be goblins or something. Similar to goblins. I can't quite make it. Yet. Could be dwarves. It looks like a dwarf. Kobolds, where are they? They're over here. So we can trade with them at some point. 
but that's not connected, I don't think, to this area down here. So is this yellow over here? Yeah, that's yellow, which means that's another area. So I've basically sort of started blocking people in. So this could be quite good for me. And by extension, you, because obviously, you know, we are a team after all. No, that's not going to help. Come on. Come on. You can go over there. You can go to the village again. Once I've got all my villagers, I will send them back into the area with the farm and they can make more money. Not many food. Lovely. Apparently I'm under attack. Don't know where. Not down here. Who's attacking me down here? Ah, you see, I'm these You've got some ghost sailors that have started attacking. Because that's a perfectly normal thing to have happen. And I mean that we've hit, taken one out. And it's only now that we've got some more shit going on. So it's getting quite difficult for us. You are under attack. I am, I'm dealing with it, I'm dealing with it. Slowly. Slowly but surely. They're not happy, but they're not going to be happy because everyone's dying because it's cold and they've got not enough food. All that kind of stuff. But now all of a sudden I can do some military stuff. Mm. That's going to be good. So um, would you like to do another connections thing? Yeah, if you want. Okay. Would you like to name the first person? Uh, no. No, feel free to pick first. All right. Want. Um, Sam Neil. Uh, okay, he was. Uh, oh, I can't even name. He was in, um, in Jurassic was Park, wasn't he? Alan Grant in Jurassic Park. He was in the Tudors. He was in Event Horizon, and he was in, um, and the BBC adaptation of it. And then there were none. And those are the things I really know him for. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with. Oh, I try not to think of someone too obvious. Uh, Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Can't think of anything that I'd basically got. They've both been in off the top of my head, so I'm going to go Keanu Reeves. Okay. It's probably not that difficult because these things aren't actually as difficult as they seem a lot of the time. No. But... Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no, it's an E. Sorry. Um, Lawrence Fishburne was in Event Horizon. Okay. And he was yeah. also in the Matrix, wasn't he? You know, you know what? I I did think about Lawrence Fishburne, and for some reason I thought that wasn't him. But no, I think you're right. I think it is him. I don't know why. I just I thought it wasn't him. Yeah, for a second there, I thought I was wrong. I just want to check. No, I think you're right. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Okay, well, that's not in then. Uh, it's, it's so difficult to come up with two random <laughs> people. Well, hey, let me just. Here's an idea. Random actor generator. Let's see who we get. So we'll uh, we'll generate um, fuck off ad. We'll generate ten. Okay. Choose. Okay. Choose a number between one and ten. Four. Four. I choose seven. Okay. So number four Good. is Harry Dean Stanton. Okay. And number seven is Jerry Lewis. Are we I can't think of anything either of those have been in. Okay, well... Was Jerry Lewis in that one about the clown during the... in the concentration camp? Yes, I think that might be getting okay. released soon. Really? Well, that, that is the only thing I can think of that he was in, and I've not seen it, and I don't know where else was in it. Okay, uh, Terence Stamp and Michael Caine, do you want to do those? 
Uh, who's Terence Stamp? Who was he? He was Chancellor Valorum. Okay, okay. And obviously, we know who Michael Caine was. So let's get from Michael Caine to the Phantom Base. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, well, I'm sure I've seen Terence Stamp in other things, though. We probably have. But the trouble is, you know, it's not always that easy, is it? Golly, he looks old now. He probably is. Okay, okay, so... Uh, he was in Michael Priscilla, Kane. Queen of the Desert. I like Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. I'm trying to, I'm trying to work through the, the Dark Knight trilogy, because... That's about it. I feel like they're the actors that are more likely to have been connected to... So Michael Wars. Kane. Um... So we can get to Lord of the Rings, because the chap who played Alrond was in Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Okay. Uh, so Michael Caine. Oh, hang on. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I'm, I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, which one it was in? Uh... Okay, so uh, <laughs> it's actually a lot easier than you're thinking. Okay, go on. Uh, Michael Caine was in the Dark Knight trilogy with Christian Bale. Christian Bale played a bad guy in Thor: Love and Thunder, which had Natalie Portman in it. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> well, I, being in. well, I um, well, I was working on the uh, Heath Ledger was in the Dark Knight, which yep. was in the Knight's Tale with the guy who played Robert Baratheon. Okay. And I was, I'd gotten that far, so maybe there's a way there as well. There could well be. Who was, is anybody That's in the Lord of the color. Rings? That's strange colour then. That's not good. Yeah. Is there anyone who was in the Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones? Probably a, probably a few people, to be honest with you. I don't know, but we've done it while well, you did it. Should I knew I... he was in a Marvel. I couldn't remember which Marvel Christian Bale was in, and I had to check that. Would you like another? Uh, yeah, go on. Why, why, hang on a minute. I thought I could scout areas now. Um, I okay. can't scout this area. Why can't I scout the area? Angela. Oh, Lan I'll tell you what. Maybe I can't get through there. Oh, that's good. Angela go Lansbury. Okay. Your turn to name one. Oh, I thought you were just picking. Uh, do I have to pick a number again, or? We'll just pick somebody. Okay. Uh, I know it's terribly difficult. But... Bob Geldof. Right, is Bob Geldof acted? He has acted. He was in The Wall, I believe. Right, so when you get from Angela Lansbury to Pink Floyd? Pretty much. It's not quite that simple, but yeah. Who else was in The Wall? Uh, it's a good question. Probably not a good idea to go have gone with Bob Geldof, actually, now I think about it. Um, do you want to do somebody else? Do you want to do one of the Beatles, maybe? I don't know. Or... Oh, uh, George Harrison was in uh, Life of Brian, so yeah, let's go with that. Okay. Um, well, Angela Lansbury had a cameo in The New Knives Out. Did she? Yeah, and Daniel Craig was in that. And Daniel okay. Craig was in... <laughs> I've done it. Daniel Craig was in... Um, at Skyfall with Judy Dench, who was in Die Another Day with John Cleese, who was in The Life of Brian. Okay, that's nice and easy. Yeah. <laughs> we don't half make these easy for ourselves, do we? Why well, we've had some food? fun ones. I've not got enough food then. I'm slow oh no, there we go. I need to build another fucking. No, not that. Another food sign over here. Otherwise, I'm gonna run out of food. Food sign. Oh, you know, I was struggling to find some fucking stone. Yeah. I've only gone and found some fucking stone right here. Right. I colonised an area so I could find some stone, and I've bloody found some stone. Okay. Annoying. Uh. Uh. That would be helpful. Oh, I should have gone with that one. I've yet to get violent with anyone, and I'm worried that that's going to 
for you by downfall. So uh, Kate Winslet. Uh, okay. Do, um... Do you want me? Ooh. I can randomly generate someone if you like. Yeah, pick someone. Pick, just pick a random actor. And our random actor is. Richard E. Grant. Okay. Kate Winslet and Richard E. Grant. Yes. Uh, it's too easy. Okay, go on. Uh, Richard E. Grant was in an episode of Doctor Who. So we go. We just make the same connection we went uh, through before through Ricky Gervais. What if we don't do Doctor Who? Well, that would probably be a bit more difficult. Okay. I'm just thinking because Richard E. Grant was in Gosford Park and that's a fucking huge cast. Um. Is there any crossover? It seems like the sort of thing that where there might be. But, uh, uh, what do I want? I think I need to start building a military again. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know God's Park well enough to comment. Well, there's a lot of people in There's definitely a connection. Oh, it's oh, certainly, yeah. In fact, I dare say they've probably been in the same thing at some the, point. If you go to the Oracle of Bacon... Yeah, website, I know. I, I can... You can just link with, yeah. with an agent. Although one of them types backwards for some reason. Yeah, I, that, I had that issue as well. It's a bit weird, isn't it? So if we, who was it, Richard E. Grant and Kate Winslet, right. Well, Bernard Hill was in Mountains of the Moon and Titanic and uh, I bet you anything there's a Gosford Park in here. It probably will be. When you're ready. Oh, I need to make more. Um. No, I'm finding it really difficult to find anything. No, there's, there's, that's, Right. There is no Gosford Park connection, apparently. Huh? Uh, who'd have funk it, eh? Another? Yeah, go for it. Um, Charles Dance. Okay. And, and Larry Lamb. Charles Dance and Larry Lamb. Right, okay, here we bloody go. Probably not that difficult again. Why? Why? Well, I, 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 I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but like uh, Charles Dance was in, it has been in all sorts, hasn't he? I mean, it was Game of Thrones, he was in, he was in the Annie G movies for fuck's sake. Yeah, he was. You know, there's, there's, all, there's gonna be all sorts of ridiculous things that he's gonna, that's gonna be. Connected. Let me think. Larry Lamb was in. Well, the two things I know him for: Gavin and Stacey in EastEnders. Yeah. And Charles Dance. Hmm. Hmm. Tricky, tricky, tricky. So who else was in? Was anyone that was in EastEnders in Game of Thrones? I don't believe so. I know Danny Dyer wanted to be in it. I know he didn't get it. But he wanted to. Yeah. Have they got a tower in there? No, they have not. I'm going to fuck up these people for a moment. Okay. Um, let's see if... Is this going to pick up on it? I doubt it somehow. They're not attacking me, they? 
and Charles Dance and Larry Lamb. I don't think Larry Lamb is going to register on this thing somehow. You'd be surprised. It, it didn't want to register. Um... Well, look at that. He is in there. Hmm. Has it got anything? Larry Lamb was in Underworld with Miranda Richardson, who was in Century with Charles Dance. Okay. Uh, there's a few more here. It's difficult. Anything I can. Uh... Really point to is knowing. Maybe there was something through EastEnders. I think maybe Barbara Windsor or something. Hmm. Oh my god, I'm, I'm going to claim this area off them. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Get out, get out, get out, run. It's probably a way through Judy and Glover. Judy and Glover must have been in Doctor Who, right? Uh, Potentially? I can't think. Oh yeah, he was. He was in the um. Wasn't he one of the Ood guys turned into an Ood? No. In the in the. I uh, know the actor you mean. That's not. That's not him. Is that Julian Glover? No, Julian Glover's older. That's something else. Someone else. I know who you mean though. Oh. Yes. No. Yeah. You're right. I'm thinking of someone else. But I mean, I can't imagine Julian Glover wasn't in Doctor Who. So you could go oh. Barbara Windsor, Doctor Who, David Tennant, one of the yeah, many you Doctor could just Who. Type Judy and Glover, Doctor Who. Yeah, I know. I know, but I, I mean, I, 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 what does it matter? I know he was in it. It depends when he was in it, doesn't it? Yeah, but you can access one Doctor through the others, can't you? Well, I mean, you, I, maybe. I mean, you can't really get okay. So. Tenant easily, can you? You can. Because it wasn't Hartnell in that episode where it was all of them. Well, no, but you're forgetting um, the time jump one. They've done crossover Doctor Who episodes with like, multiple Doctors. So you go from David Tennant in the time crash thing to what's his face? Is it McCoy in that one? Not McCoy. Um... Oh, Celery Guy. Yeah. yeah. And you go from him through like the five Doctors or something to. You know, there's there's crossover, so it's it's easily done. Mm. Well, apparently, he was married to Eileen Atkins. I didn't know that. I did not know that. Um, but yeah, he was in some of the really early ones, so it it, it definitely can be done. Okay. And then enough. and then Judy and Glover, of course, played Grandmaster Pycelle in uh, in Game of Thrones. So hang on, how did we get from who was it we were going from? Larry Lamb. Okay. Through Barbara Windsor to that yep. Doctor Who episode to David Tennant to Celery yep. Doctor. Okay. To insert Peter Davison. Peter Davison to insert valid Doctor here through one of the uh, five Doctors and the three Doctor ones to um, Judy and Glover through Game of Thrones to Charles Dance. Okay. Happy days. Easy peasy. I knew it was doable. Lemon is crazy. Jiminy Cricket. Cheesy peas. See, that's the trick to things like this. You've got to find uh, prolific people who were in things with lots of, with a big ensemble cast mm. of established names. That is the goal, isn't it? Uh, are you still going up number? Yes, you are. Should we uh, keep, <sighs> keep going with another one? Yeah, let's do it. Um, the outline of the island is pretty much established now, by the way. Gosh, it's not going to take you too long, really, it doesn't seem. What, to... Well, I mean, it could go either way at the moment. I'm not in the lead when it comes to my fame, but I've not really taken as much land, so I'm having a bit of trouble with the old food problems. Mm. So my army is... Where is my army over at the moment? My army's all over here. Which is not helpful, because these guys... The yellow fellas have started building towers and towers that kind of wreck through your uh, defenses quite a bit. Mm. So, shall we go? 
Um, what have we got going on? Side fire thingy? Not that one. This one? No, I haven't got enough money. do another few random actresses so can we go from Rashida Jones that is the name that rings the bell but she was in it Parks and Recreation and also The Office oh it's him okay yep her uh, her oh okay yeah she played the the nurse in Parks and Recreation oh Rec Anne yeah yeah yep yep yep, yep. And yeah, yeah. um, we'll go to random actor generator again, and I'll pick oh, one from random. I don't think I'm going to going to win this. That's all right. We enjoyed the journey, and Robin Williams. Why not Robin Williams? Uh, oh, right. okay. You know who Rashida Jones's dad is? No. Quincy Jones. Oh. Um, I'd never guessed that. So, Robin Williams. Um. Uh, Robin Williams was in a lot of stuff. Yes, he was. Um. So uh, Okay, can we get to uh what's his face? Uh forgotten his name. Steve Carell. No, no 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 no. That would be easy. Like I'm thinking of. Uh he played number two in uh Austin Powers. Oh and in Wayne's World and the th guy who allegedly killed Natalie. Robert something, isn't it? thingy um i know who you mean i can't remember his name Ro robert low rob low what oh rob low that's what i'm thinking oh i thought you meant you mean young number 2 i don't know who played old number 2 it was um natalie wood robert wagner Ah, yeah. Yeah, Rob, Rob Lowe played young, number two. Okay. Um, well, I mean, it's easier from one side than the other. Isn't it? I, I think so. Rashida but Jones. The thing, is, the thing is, she was in uh, Parks and Rec with Rob Lowe. Yeah, I said that, him, that's so. easier one side than the other. That's what I meant. Yeah. Um... So if well, uh, well, 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 well. That's enough money. I can. Oh no, I can't. What else has Rob Lowe even been in? Well, he was in Wayne's World, like I said. Okay. Which isn't necessarily the right way to go with it, but maybe we go through Kathy Bates. Well, what was she in? She was in the office. Not was while it? Rashida Jones was in it. Yeah, she played one of the many owners of Dunder Mifflin. Oh. So Rashida Jones was with insert any number of members of the cast of the office who was with Kathy Bates. Jack Nicholson to Jack he, he was about Schmidt with Kathy Bates. I don't know, I've not seen that. Is uh, Jack Nicholson in anything that Robin Williams has been in? Probably. Mm -hmm. Sure it is, there's a lot of potential. Silly little things, isn't there? Hmm. 
Well, I'm not going to beat ourselves up too much for not knowing everybody's filmog filmography. No, no, and as we shouldn't. Well, we just need to get to somebody who is in. People that are sick, people that are dying. Why are they dying of plague? No hospitals. I've got hospitals. Yeah. Oh, they've stopped dying of plague. It's not like we've got a food shortage. We've got food. Probably we're coming into winter. Which means uh... we're going to have all sorts of problems. Oh, it's pain. This is this is this is proving to be quite a difficult level, mm. quite a difficult game. And maybe a bit off more than I could choose. I put it on hard. What, hard what about if we went through? Oh shit! I've lost. If we went through Mrs. Doubtfire, Mara Wilson. Okay. Leads, Who was Matilda? Yeah, le leads to um, Danny DeVito. Yeah. Who was in many things. Yeah. Uh, Could we maybe get a? He was cheese? in always. He was in always sunny. He wasn't always sunny. Was was she the Jones ever in that? Because there's quite a lot of people I, who've been in that. I'm I sure. don't know. I'm thinking. I see. I went Cheers and then Frasier. Because the woman who played. Matilda's mum was in is Danny DeVito's real life wife and Rhea Perlman. Rhea Perlman is in Cheers, and also guest starred on Frasier. Um, um. Uh, Jim Carrey ever do anything with? Don't know. Oh, I've got it. Okay. I've got it. So, the Tina Fey, no, wait, Amy Palmer, is it? Who's in Parks and Rec? The main blonde yeah. woman. Uh, Amy Palmer, yeah. Yeah, she does Saturday Night Live skits with Tina Fey, who's mm -hmm. in 30 Rock with Alec Baldwin, who was in a Thomas the Tank Engine movie with Mara Wilson. He was in Mrs. Doubtfire with Robin Williams. Okay. Uh, we can go. We can go smaller. Well okay. done for finding the connection. We can go shorter. Okay. Did you look it up? I, I had a little look. Okay. I, uh, not on the website because you can see what's on my computer screen. Um, but she uh, was in the Muppet film. Right. And he has been on the Muppet show. So if you go through. Kermit, oh. the then you've got you fucking there. You, Kermit is the connection. A puppet, arguably. A Frank muppet, Oz. sir. Not a puppet. A muppet. Kermit the Frog. And I'll thank you to remember. Is is the uh, is a connection between the two of them. Frank Oz, if you want to be more specific, because I'm sure it was probably actually Frank Oz. Well, to... yeah, that that's fine. Yeah. Or or Jim Henson, arguably. If he did any of it, uh, right. But no. That was a solid one. Maybe we. I don't think I'm going to win this. How long have we been going? Not too That's long. About an hour. No. I mean, forty-nine. Stop. Forty-nine minutes. Oh, I forgot. I went for a shit, and you went another smoke. And... I don't. I didn't. I don't have any cigarettes left. Oh well. I needed to get more, and I couldn't be bothered because my shoes fell apart. As they do. What about walking you do? Mm, yeah, probably. I need, to, I need to buy some more. Very urgently. Tell you what I need. I need to find some way of getting more food. I can't, I can't build a boat uh, house yet. Would you like to do it? another connection thing? Yeah, let's do it. I'm quite addicted to this now. Um. So, I'll do the random thing again, shall I? I'll randomise it again. Yeah, pick a random and then you can feel free to just pick two people from the list. Of what you can see. 
Moment. Ähm, right. Let's randomize another ten. Right. See some of these neither one of us know. Hmm. Okay. Karen Allen. Okay. He was in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Who has? Um Marion. Okay. Yep. And Do you know which one John Goodman? Uh, he was... Yeah, I can think of a few things he's been in. Okay, John Goodman then. Okay, so my immediate thought would be to go from um, her to... Uh, is it John Reese davies Yeah. Because that's automatically like a... He, he, he's a big actor, isn't he? He's, he's been in a lot of things. Um, and also, importantly, uh, he was in Lord of the Rings. John Goodman was in... King Ralph with Peter O'Toole. Okay. Um. <laughs> and uh. And it turns out that makes it nice and easy. <laughs> potentially. I'm just racking my brains. Because there is a Bond connection here. Okay. Um, because. Karen Allen was in oh, Raiders with uh, Harrison Ford, who was in Last Crusade with Sean Connery. Hmm. Right, Ben, I'm going to get aggressively violent with this next group of people next to me. Um, what was he, who did you went through? John Rhys Davis, didn't you? Or yeah, he was in he was in Lord of the Rings. So I figured it was a safe bet to try and get to a lot more people. Hmm. I feel like it's not a terrible decision. Well, John Goodman was in the Flintstones movie with What's Her Face from Third Rock from the Sun. But she and Rosie O'Donnell also popped up in one of Wilma. And. Um, Oh, who's the who's the, I can't remember her name. I'm gonna have to look it up. She's an older actress. She was in Dynasty. Joan Collins. Okay. So. I can't. I don't think I can go around now. That's really annoying. I don't think I can ask those here. So, Peter O'Toole. Um. Who are we going from again? Who's the other person we're going to try to get? To? I've got it. <laughs> Go on then. Okay, so John Goodman was in King Ralph with Peter O'Toole. Okay. Peter O'Toole did Macbeth with Richard with um, Brian Blessed, who was in Macbeth with Richard Briers. Okay. And Richard Briers was in an episode of Midsummer Murders with. What's his face? The Barnaby man. I can't remember the actor's name. John Nettles. John Barnaby. John Nettles. John Nettles was in another Midsummer Murders episode with um, Honor Blackman. Honor Blackman was in Goldfinger with Sean Connery. Sean Connery was in The Last Crusade with Harrison Ford. Who was in Raiders of the Lost Ark with Karen Allen? Ah. Nice. Thank you very much. You've got to get to those big franchises really haven't you yeah Those long running series and big franchises and strong ensemble castings that is the key do you have any more topics uh nothing i'm afraid well i've got one 
Christ. My last one. Okay. Um, have you heard the latest on the Captain Tom thing? Uh, you know what? Actually, I was going to write about this uh, as a for a topic for us, and I completely forgot. Well, I think we should open by uh, explaining who Captain Tom is for the benefit of some of our viewers from Paraguay. Do we have viewers from Paraguay? We do now. Do we have viewers? I don't. Know I don't I, yes, probably. Yes, we do. I've seen the stats. Oh. Um, the fools. So. Yeah, sorry. Um, during Captain COVID, uh, there were lots of charity things going on. And one of the more successful ones was a chap called Captain Tom, who was like 99 at the time, but he turned 100 who did laps in his garden to try and raise money for the NHS, which was under a lot of pressure at the time. And uh, everybody rallied around this because it was a feel-good story that, uh, you know, somebody else was doing the work, but you could feel good about it. And, of course, the government fucking loved it because it yep. was nice and cosy and uh, took attention away from their failings. Of which there are many. Yes, and he raised an awful lot, like 36 million, 37 million for the NHS, which was great. Was great. Um, and he was knighted, knighted by the Queen. They fast tracked him for a knighthood, and then he uh, he died after and catching COVID. Um, after being dragged to Barbados by his family, <laughs> who claimed it was his on his bucket list. Um, which sort of brings us to the fact that his daughter's been in the news recently for building a spa using charity money. I think. I think that is the, the 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 charge, as it were. Yes, on her own, as part of her own house, a bit like a heated swimming pool. Yeah. It's not the first time she's been accused of taking advantage. Actively of embezzling. The, yeah, of, well, of taking advantage of her father's name for her own, you know, good. Yeah. She, I think she, I think she works in PR, and she was like instrumental in getting Captain Tom into the national limelight. Um, mm. it was just, she's been riding this for a long time, There's selling Captain Tom merchandise to fucking idiots. I can only presume are the most tedious fucking people on earth who buy I'd, that sort of thing. Yeah, I would assume you're probably correct. Uh, I bet they're utterly insufferable. A bit the complete dimwit. Um, no offence. Well, I mean a bit of offence, but and uh, yeah, I mean, what did you think of this Captain Tom thing? Did you think much the same as I did when it was all kicking off? I I, I was thinking we're all uh, applauding this situation, but we're ignoring the fact that the the, the, the problem it, it doesn't fix the problem. All it does is highlight it. Mm. Like the, the NHS is an underfunded institution. Yeah, and rather than an act actual change we were saying yes let's let this old let's be honest fairly decrepit yes at 99 you're not you're not a sprightly fellow at 99 no, he did quite not. well i'm gonna be honest with you i have no issue with him well, I, I, yeah, I, well, I i i i disapprove of a situation that led to him being necessary yes i it's not really captain tom that we have the issue with either one of us he was just an old man who was trying to do something nice and he did, and you know that is it, it is right that he has been applauded for that. Yes, he did an it awful is. lot of good. I just think it was blown out of proportion, and people latched onto this as a feel-good story that they didn't really need to think about, because it's yeah. actually quite horrifying when you, <laughs> you think. About oh, absolutely, it. yeah. And, um, it is a it is a terrible situation. And um, yeah, I saw a clip of his daughter being applauded at Wimbledon. Yeah. I was like, this woman is going to try and ride this for as long as she can. She has done nothing. It's like the saintly Captain Tom. Because that's what kind of. I'm not going to win this. Have you fucked it? I'm losing. I've, I, I've got soldiers dying in the field because they haven't got enough food. Well, Captain Tom did sort of become a modern saint, hasn't he? Yeah. You know. And honestly, kind of fair play to her. She clearly did a very good job. Of, like. Getting his name out there and making him a thing. That was clearly a very successful bit of PR. Um, you know, she knew how to sell it. It was it was sort of easy to sell at the time. It was, to be fair, it wasn't it? And, you know, a lot of people had various interests in that. The government wanted something to distract attention from 
mounting death. Yes, and uh, I think a lot of people just wanted something they could they could uh, go. Oh, ain't that nice? Isn't he great? I love Captain Tom. I've become a yow. Right. Well, I respect your life choices. You are still my friend. Um. I, you know, I might win on wisdom. Right. Wisdom might be how I get this. It might not be anything to do with the fact that I've got so many fucking soldiers, but I am I am approaching the wisdom victory. There is a place that will show you the wind conditions. There we go. Yeah. The one that is furthest across the bar for any of them mm. is me right now. Over halfway there on, on the law. That's good. Um... Yes, that's. I mean, that's really all I have to say about Captain Tom. Yeah, it's just it's it's depressing. The whole fucking thing is depressing. I mean, honestly, it's it's shameless what she's doing, but at the same time, I mean, I probably would. <laughs> oh, but I wasn't that. already rich going into it. Yeah, I mean, I suppose he he was a relatively well-off man. He was. Right? He was a, a he was an elderly Tor, Tory. Was what he was. He he, he, he and he, obviously he he came from a time when it was easier to be those things. Yes. It's it was a, it's a, not necessarily difficult to be elderly now, but it's very difficult to be a Tory. <laughs> yeah. But he uh. Yeah, and they I, I mean I obviously I don't know. But I've seen an awful lot of people suggesting that they dragged him to Barbados. They used him to get a free trip to Barbados. I wouldn't be surprised. So by that. they could hang out with um, the chap off summer holiday, Cliff. Cliff Richard. Yeah, and then he got COVID and died. As again, people did. A lot of people did. Yes, Is but he—I right? mean—that oh. money he raised has done an awful lot of good. It's just a shame he had to do it. You know? Mm. It should not have oh, come is, from him. It should have already been there. That is the problem, isn't it? Is that he had to do so. Yeah, that money should so. have been taken from taxes. Yeah. Everyone is freezing stuff because I don't have any woodcutters. No, 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 no. He, yeah. he, he was not far off his 101st birthday. Was he not? No. It's only about Come on, chop wood, chop month. wood, chop wood. I need wood. There we go. No one's freezing to death anymore. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. This has got more difficult than it needed to be. A lot more difficult than it needed to be. He received a BBC Sports Personality of the Year award. Well, do you think uh, maybe it's, it would have been? I, I, you know, I, I used to want to pedalo down the river, but we, I live near. Yeah. As a for a charity thing, I should have done that, I and mean, then you know, I would have been getting lauded. I should say it wasn't the main one; it was a uh, the Helen Rollison one, which is given for outstanding achievement in the face of adversity. He performed right. a cover of "You'll Never Walk Alone," which yeah. is funny to me. Michael Ball, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's the oldest person to achieve a UK number one. Yeah. God, he had a... He had a weird fucking year or so at the end of his life. <laughs> it was a he hell of a did. year. <laughs> he started in... April 2020, 6th of April 2020, less than a year later he died. It is absurd. The whole thing is absurd. And yeah. Uh, I haven't got enough food to justify it, so I can't do that. I have dwindled my army down. In an attempt to try and make it so that I've got more food stuff going on. I've got to do something.
God, the flags above 10 and 11 Downing Street were flown at half mast when he died. Oh, of course they were. Both houses. Oh, lover. An excuse to. Both houses of Parliament held a one minute silence. There was a petition for him to get a state funeral that got 200,000 signatures. <laughs> you know, that's. The point is, he was well loved. And now. He was sort of a symptom of that weird fucking time. Yeah. He's kind of a fascinating figure. I'm going for the wisdom victory, if it wasn't obvious. I'm gonna I'm gonna try that because I think it's the best that I've got for for basically everything. Apparently they were making a biopic. It was okay. in uh, twenty twenty. Uh, well, I didn't fuck about, did they? No. Oh my Christ. On the 2nd of June 2021, Paradox Interactive added added more as a military leader in their grand strategy game, Hearts of Iron 4. <laughs> Fucking hell. Now that is taking the piss. <laughs> the, I mean, this can't be right. At a press conference to mark his own 61st birthday, Naruhito, the Japanese emperor, spoke of Captain Tom's achievements. Spoke of Captain Tom's achievements and words as one of the things that had impressed him over the past year. I mean... And again, this is all applauding, affirming of our national government. That is staggering. That is absolutely fucking staggering. And it's all, it all just feeds into itself. They're not really... It's the further removed you get, it's less about Captain Tom and what he did. It's more about this is a figure who has come to represent something which is important to a lot of people in this country. Mm -hmm. The you know the as someone on Twitter put the twin religions of World War Two and the NHS, and people are just sort of trying to associate themselves with that because they have something to gain from it, and it's most obvious with the politicians. But it's just... It's kind of fucking fascinating. I wonder if there's a video essay about it. There may well be. Because it seems like the sort of thing... I mean, I'm sure she was. I'm sure he was, uh, you know, decent enough chap. Oh, for sure. Oh, they are going ahead with this biopic. I suppose you've got to, really, at that point, don't you? God, I mean, he, it was. How fucking bizarre would it must that have been for him? Yeah, there's an interview with GQ on here. Fine. Hello. He was on Piers Morgan's Life Stories. Oh, that's not something to be proud of. I know, but it... I mean, everybody was just... Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still there. I'm just listening to you. 
I'm sorry, I'm just... I'm... I don't have an awful lot to add to the situation at the point. <laughs> it's ju- it was just such a staggering... I think it sort of encapsulates how we as a country dealt with COVID. Okay. Because there was a lot of virtue signaling going on. Do you remember clap for the NHS? Oh, I fucking hated that. <laughs> I know, I refused to do it. No, I, I never did it. Because I just thought it was just a way to feel better about yourself. And that you accomplished absolutely fuck all. Don't get me wrong, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of the NHS. I think that oh, God, yes. I think they should get all the support that they need. Problem is, that's the issue. They need to get the support. I suspect a lot of the the uh, more committed supporters of the NHS were the ones who didn't clap. Whereas the ones who did clap were the ones who, who, you know, in theory supported it, but did bugger all to actually support it, i.e. people who voted Tory. Hmm. And that is the be all and end all, isn't it, really? Mm. It's, it's... If you have voted to, to support the, the current government, yes. say, then you are automatically, let's be honest, at fault. Mm. There's it's... no two ways about it. No, it's... you're right. It... I think, yeah, I think... Oh, right. See, the right criticises the left for virtue signalling, but... It's almost always the right who does shit like this. Who institute like poppies? Do you wear a poppy? I do, but it's uh, just because it's easier than not. It's not even that I I disagree with wearing a poppy. Of course I don't. I mean I I have done and I probably will again in the future. I haven't for a little while. I mean I always I always take a moment. You know I I fucking use that one minute silent silence to like properly reflect on it. You know, I don't just stand there in silence waiting for it to be over. I give some thought. Um, I don't do much more than that, unfortunately. I probably should. But I do, I yeah. I always buy a poppy. I may not wear it, but I do always buy it. I think that's more important than wearing it. It's complicated, isn't it? Well, I remember seeing... <laughs> I think it was the Cookie Monster on the one show, and somebody stuck a poppy on it. On the Cookie Monster. Okay. I guess. I don't know what the logic of that was. <laughs> like they were afraid people would complain. Like oh, how? God, okay. How dare the Cookie Monster not wear a poppy? Yeah, how dare they? Uh, I don't think I'm going to win this, then. Even having changed my angle to what? wisdom base, I'm at 69%, and then someone's at 83% on another condition. So I'm a little concerned that maybe... Oh, when they got criticised for that, the Daily Mail did an article about it. Honestly, I don't think the Daily Mail would have given two shits if the Cookie Monster didn't have a poppy. Oh, probably not. They were certainly afraid of it. Um... Yeah. How's the game going? Right, I literally just told you. Okay, sorry. Like a, like a minute, less than a minute ago. Not well. I said I don't think I'm going to win this, even though I've shifted to a wisdom-based strategy, because I was on 69%, now I'm on 70% victory. These folks are on 83 last time, so. Yeah, so I am... It, it, could, it could go either way. But the trouble is, these bastards have turned up. Mm. These bastards... Are going to try and kill all my people. Right, they look a lot Who fiercer. Are they the ones in armour? They are the ones in armour. I have got a bloke that's doing killing. I did survive that fight, and everyone's got that fight going on. Because it, it was the gates of hell, basically. Opened up briefly. I don't think I lost anything, but I have got some people who don't have homes. But that's fine, because I don't necessarily need them to have homes. Because I don't have an awful lot of, you know. Yeah. I, I need more wisdom, and I'm not getting the wisdom that I need. They're on eighty-four percent. They've gone up one percent. I've gone up another two. So maybe, maybe I will actually catch up. At well, this stage. I, but I can't speed uh, this up anymore at this stage. <laughs> I have faith in you. I don't. All right. 
Would you like me to retract my faith in you? Up to you. What is your faith? I can't do that. That's already. Can I? Say what I can do. I can organize a feast. That'll help. David will cheer up. I've got plenty of food. I get extra lore. What does lore do? I help with research or anything? It's basically the wisdom thing. Like, that is your stat. So that's, that is my lore meter going up. When I go up, I get another, what do you call it? And after two more of these smaller ones, I get the big one. That means I win. So, I am getting there. Just, I need to. I don't know. Maybe I do that one. Yeah, I think I do that one next to shipbuilding, because then I can build the lighthouse, and the lighthouse gives me better law stats, because that's what they they they're going for at the moment. So they they they're searching for law and money. I have tons of fucking money. I can't do anything with. I can't buy the stone, so I haven't got the, the right building for it. Can you take the take... out? No, I, I, could, I could build the building that means I can buy the stone so I can buy some more of the things that are giving me the law. I could do that, right? You could trade. But it's not worth me doing it. The amount of stone that I'm going to need to to really give myself a chance at winning it will require me to... Oh, I suppose I could just I could upgrade this area. I could develop that stone. And then I could build a mine there because there's some stone now. I think. Yeah, so I never did get that stone. How much stone is there? It's thirty. So that's uh, another three of the law thingies I could build in theory. This meter's going up quite quick still. So I might, I might manage it, but I'm not. It's not my favourite way of winning. Seventy-eight to oh, they've dropped. They've gone down to seventy-two. Right. And I'm, I'm now ahead of them. My percentage is higher than Evan. So you're winning. So maybe I am. I am now winning again, but it feels cheap. It shouldn't. Victory is victory, right? Um. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you, you shouldn't get caught up in pride. Well, there's nothing wrong with being caught up in pride. But maybe, maybe I'm I'm on the verge of victory. Lovely. All right, what one could argue that when that meter builds, I've won. Well, okay, that's. I mean, it's coming on of some fair clip. It is. Because we're feasting. So, do you think you'll be done soon? Well, I should hope so. It's not going to take two hours to get through this. Okay. So, you know. Should we try another connections thing? If you want. Okay. Um. Oh, look, it's turned my percentage victory in the top left now. Um, 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 um. Woody Allen. Okay. And do you want to name someone? Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Okay. So, Woody Allen was in... Well, I only really know him from Ants and Annie Hall, I guess. I'm sure Robert De Niro and uh, What's-Her-Face. You know who I mean, Annie Hall? Who played Annie Hall? I don't know who played Annie Hall. I've not seen Annie Hall. I know very little about Annie Hall. Bear with... wasn't strident was it no good that would be too easy a connection again it was diane keaton oh no they're on to me they're on to me ben oh god but where you are under attack they're taking this area and the problem with this is that this area is the area where i'm breaking so much of my my law that maybe just maybe they fucked me. 
They've not reduced the amount that I'm getting, but they well, they've not reduced the amount that I've got. But they have reduced the amount that I'm getting. Hmm. Oh, okay, I've got it. Go on. Diane Keaton was in the Godfather Part Two with um, Al Pacino, and indeed the Godfather, and indeed the Godfather Part Three with Al Pacino. Oh. He was in The Irishman with Robert De Niro. Nice and easy. Yep. Yep. We do like easy ones. Oh. Uh, let's do... David Mitchell. Um, I'm well aware you can go through Doctor Who with David Mitchell, though. He was in, the, in Doctor Who. He played. He voiced one of the robots with Robert Webb on that dinosaurs in the spaceship one, I think. Oh. But he was in it. Okay, fair enough. You can't. You don't want to pick anyone that was in Game of Thrones then, because David Bradley was in that episode as well. All right. Or um. Or Harry Potter. Or Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Madonna. What is she acted in? She was in um, Evita. I don't know. Did they make a film out of that? I think they did. And swept away. And you're right, I don't know anybody else either. <laughs> okay, do you want to do. Johnny Depp? Okay. Johnny Depp for who? To, um, David Mitchell. Yeah. Okay. Although, uh, oh, if accounting, would I lie to you? Shit, I can do it in two. Why? Who? What are your two? Mackenzie Crook was in. Well, one. Mackenzie Crook was in. Would I on an episode of Would I Lie to You? And was in. And yeah, fair enough. Okay, let's let's not count panel shows. <laughs> okay, in that case, I reckon your best bet might well be to go from. Wasn't Depp in one of Gervais's things? He was in extras, I'm sure. I think he either did. extras or life's too short, but he he did pop up, yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Which I'm sure makes it a lot easier. Cause well, it's Warwick. Comedy, then, isn't it? Warwick Davis was in Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. If you want to go that way, you can do that. <laughs> I mean, I think there's probably you can do Helena Bonham Carter and um. Sweeney Todd as well. Yeah, we yeah. God damn it, there's uh, <laughs> it seems like you take every single actor in Britain has either been on a panel show, been in Harry Potter, been in Doctor Who, or been in James Bond or Game of Thrones. You know. Between those four properties you cover basically every British actor working yeah. today. Pretty much. Very easily, yeah. Let's do some Americans then. Okay. Um, Charlie uh, Sheen. Do you know much about Charlie Sheen? Uh, no, I mean, it was in. Um, you know, I can think of a few things he's been in, but not much. Okay, no Charlie Sheen then. No, no, we could go with him. Because we can go from him to. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. And. Um, Uh, trying to think of who else we could pick. American actor Jack Nicholson. Okay, so who was got... the first one again? Charlie Sheen to Jack Nicholson, right? Yeah. And we can't use drugs. No. Because they're both off their tits. God love them. Okay. So, Charlie Sheen was in a scary movie with Lindsay Lohan. Okay. can't remember which scary movie it was, but I think it was specifically Lindsay Lohan that was in it rather than Anna Faris. Right. So, we can't go from Anna Faris to Friends like I was thinking we might be able to. But <laughs> we've got options still. What, what else was Lindsay Lohan in? Uh, well, she was in Mean Girls. She was in uh, the Herbie film. I can't remember who okay. else was in the Herbie film. She was in that. Okay, and we're going to we're going to Jack Nicholson. 
significant, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um Right. Right, right, right. Is that the same scary movie that um Leslie Nielsen, yes. Okay. Leslie Nielsen is in that one as the president. Because Leslie Nielsen was in Colombo. Okay. Is there anything I can do with that? I don't know. He was in Colombo. Who, who was Jack? Let's work backwards. Let's put a pin in that. Right, Jack Nicholson has been in. Uh, he was in The Shining. He was in. Uh, Devil's Advocate. About I think. Schmidt. It's a good few as, good men. The Witches of Eastwick. Batman. A few good men might be a good shout because he's got uh, Tom Cruise in it. Mm. Tom Cruise has worked with fucking tons of people. Mm. And the Witches of Eastwick has Susan Sharan, Sarandon, Cher, and I can't remember the third person. No, I couldn't tell you. Susan Sarandon. Um. Susan Sarandon does a voice for Rick and Morty. Yes, she does. She's the therapist, right. she's, I think. Yeah, she's a therapist in Rick and Morty. We're about to route we could go down. Maybe. Maybe. You get a lot of guest stars in that. Funnily enough, David Mitchell and Robert Webb recently. Yeah, so I heard... And Daniel Radcliffe. Yes. I heard... Um... <sighs> so Leslie Nielsen... Connected with Susan. I mean, I could always try and go through Star Trek. Years in Colombo again, because Leonard Nimoy and Shatner were both in Star in Colombo. Was Susan Sarandon in The Simpsons? Possibly. Uh, I I want I want to double check which scary movie it was they was in. Okay. If it's not the one with Leslie Nielsen, it sort of fucks me a bit, unless there's another person connected. No, I'm sure he is in it. I'm just, I'm wondering if. I think it is, isn't it? It's the one with, the, it's the signs ripoff, isn't it? I think I've yeah. Seen that one. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's definitely in that one. Um. So. I'm going to Jack Nicholson. Okay. Maybe we go a different... Oh, hang on. Leslie Nielsen was in number four as well. With uh, Anna Faris. Okay, does that help? Well, I mean, he she she has been on Friends. She had quite a big role on Friends. Okay. And that basically opens up to 90% of the most prolific American actors. <laughs> well, I was who thinking... At some point have guest starred on there. Go through Danny DeVito. Danny V. Danny. Ah, oh, we've got it. Danny DeVito was also in. Yeah. Friends. He was in Batman Returns, which yeah. also starred Michael Keaton as Batman, who was who played Batman in Batman opposite Jack Nicholson as the Joker. We've done it. There we go. I like ones like that, and a little bit of little bit of thinking. Mm. Should we go again? Well, we are very nearly. If you look at this number at the top. Which number at the top? That number at the this, top. This number that's down here. We are about to achieve victory, Ben, by thinking our brains off. That wouldn't help us in the real war. Hmm. But we have achieved victory. Yay. <laughs> this so, is a time lapse of how everyone expanded. So how exactly did you win? I I outfought everyone. I achieved knowledge that makes us super powerful. Right. Okay. I think it's bullshit, yeah, that's not a way to win over your bullies at school, kids. It's just a research victory in a, in any other sort of game. You know, it's not. It's not. Uncommon. So you basically invented nuclear weapons. I suppose so. Yeah. Okay. But you can see how our borders have grown and everyone else's borders have grown as the time goes on. And uh, kobolds appeared up. They were a bit of a pain in the ass because they expanded into this bit. 
Mm. If I hadn't expanded into that bit, I'd have taken that bit and then expanded into this bit with the giant sword and I'd have won quicker. I had enough food to get to the sword place, but then <laughs> I lost my bridge to it. Well, that's a nice quick game. It can be. It can be quicker. It can be longer. Depends how you want to play it. Mm. But, yeah. So, uh... Forward this a bit. And you can see my land shrinking yeah. from from around here. That 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 just got taken away. That's going to get taken away in a sec. It's slashing a little colour. Oh, it was. Come on. It's going to flash. There we go. It's flashing. There we go. That's disappeared. It's not mine anymore. That's going to disappear. And then I've start. I've got the fourth places I started with, <laughs> and I won with those four places. That's what I needed. All these people have taken over massive swathes of the continent. Here I am, down by the coast with the nuclear weapons. GG, boys. GG. Right. Well, that was fun. Will you be revisiting this, do you think? Oh, probably at some point. I need. To, I might go through the campaign or something at some point. Okay. It's well, a lot, uh... It's a lot more relaxing than trying to win instantly. I guess that's it for this uh, this video. Yeah, I'll just claim some rewards from the random rewards that you can get. So uh, we'll we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm not. You okay? Well, okay, whatever. Bye. Bye.